if you were cooking a meal, you'd end up with dust in your food and you would feel it in your teeth. You'd start to eat and when you would drink water or something, you would uh, grit down and you always felt like you had grit between your teeth, you know, it was, it felt terrible. The next day when mother and my grandmother started cleaning out the house, they were taking the dirt out in buckets full. They were scooping it up onto two uh, uh, wheat scoops, which are pretty good size. So dark, almost black. To the astonishment of residents, the dust kept coming. In 1932, the Weather Bureau reported 14 dust storms. The next year, the number climbed to 38. People tried to protect themselves by hanging wet sheets in front of doorways and windows to filter the dirt. But keeping the fine particles out was impossible. The dust permeated the tiniest cracks and crevices. Nineteen thirty four. The storms were coming with alarming frequency. Residents believe they could pinpoint a storm's origins by the color of the dust. As the storms rampaged across the land, they unleashed another destructive force. I can remember when Dad had a good wheat crop growing and it blew terribly hard for two days. At the end of that two days, static electricity, the electricity in the air, had completely killed the wheat crop. All of that green wheat had just turned brown and was dead. For farmers, it was going on three years of planting with little to show for it. The hard times were beginning to take their toll. I was depressed. My mother, she'd be walking the floor, and when she got nearly crying, her chin would draw up, you know, and she'd wring her hands and say, oh, the wind, the wind, the wind, and she'd just cry because she realized the condition things were in. I didn't. I just thought, well, it's dry and the wind's blowing and the sand's blowing. But she realized how Dad was having to work and what little he was making, and we was about to starve to death. We had meager food at that time. Everyone did. And we lived literally on cornbread and beans. And that was our main meal. And at night, we just have cornbread and milk, but so did everybody else. In fact, I felt like we had good food compared to a lot of people. Outside the Southern Plains, few grasped the full measure of the disaster. Washington, the Dust Bowl was seen as just another trouble spot in the nationwide crisis of the Depression. The government began offering relief through Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal. In 